Um, thank you, for Satish, for inviting me to come speak about the Green New Deal. Uh, my name is Hudson Villeneuve, and I'm one of the hub coordinators for the Sunrise Movement in Ann Arbor, um, but more generally the county area. Um, I'm a political science student at Eastern Michigan University. Formerly worked on Abdul El Sayed's campaign, worked on voter registration program for Next Gen America during the 2018 midterms. Um, and I got started with Sunrise the, uh, in December. Let's see here. <coughs> Okay, well, I can't even see my own PowerPoint. So I'm going to walk around and see what this says. I mean, I can put it on. So, I think you, you can just take this to that table. Oh, yeah. That'd be perfect. Perfect. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Where and one just use that. Cool. So, our mission is to make climate change the number one priority in our politics locally and across the nation. Um, we have to end the corporate influence of fossil fuel executives and their money in our politics. Um, because we believe that is the number one restraint on climate progress in our country. Um, P supporters of the Green New Deal take about 24 times less donations than um, people who are against the Green New Deal. So there's a direct correlation between the money from those executives and the support for climate action in Congress. Um, we also want to elect leaders, support leaders who stand up for the health of our nation and for climate action. Uh, so our main campaign is the Green New Deal. Uh, we started hearing about this last fall. Um, it, it was formally introduced as a bill in the House by Rep. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and uh, Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts um, in February. There are 91 House co-sponsors, 12 Senate co-sponsors, including almost all the major Dem presidential candidates. There are three main pillars of the Green New Deal, and I know there's going to be a lot of questions about this. There's a lot of misinformation. I know you hear on Fox that it's going to ban all cows. You're not going to be able to eat hamburger. Uh, you're not going to be able to fly on an airplane. That's not really true, uh, but we can answer more of that. But the three main pillars of this resolution is that we're going to decarbonize the economy, and that's going to be in line with climate science based on the IPCC report that was released in November. Uh, we need to reduce our total uh, CO2 equivalent emissions by 40 to 60 percent by 2030. So you'll hear often we have 12 years left or we have 11 years left. That's what we're talking about. We have 12 years left to reduce our emissions significantly to keep our planet from warming, warming 1.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and honestly, 1.5 degrees Celsius is still going to be catastrophic. We're already seeing some of the worst floods, wildfires, droughts in, in the world history and some of the warmest years on record, and we're about at 0.8 degrees Celsius change from the start of the Industrial Revolution. So if we get to 1.5, that's like a best case scenario, it's still gonna be catastrophic. We drastically have to change the way we do things. Um, while we do that, while we get rid of fossil fuel um, energy sources, we need to make sure that it's a just transition and that we're not leaving behind communities that have been traditionally left behind. We need to make sure resources are distributed to historically exploited communities, including people of color, indigenous communities, respecting indigenous land rights, and also fossil fuel dependent economies. So like Appalachia, uh, we need to make sure that those people who work in the fossil fuel industry now have jobs in the new green economy. And that leads to the third one is a federal jobs guarantee. Anyone who wants a job in America can have one with the federal government. And what we would have to do is provide training and resources to make sure all skill levels, from the top engineers who are designing these massive programs to the plant worker who's assembling things like solar panels, are given the training and the skills they need to work in this new economy. So here's a list of the co-sponsors. Won't go over that too much, uh, but you can find it online. Uh, here's some pictures of us, um, some Ann Arbor Sunrise Memphis movement members um, down in Washington, D.C., telling <laughs> Mitch McConnell to look us in the eyes to tell us why he wouldn't um, endorse the Green New Deal. There's me sitting in uh, Speaker Pelosi's office in December uh, demanding that she act on climate change. What we've been doing locally, we've been talking to local representatives. I'm sure all the people in this room have heard from me at some point. Um, we've been bird-dogging politicians, um, calling them out, making sure that their constituents, uh, we're holding them accountable to why they haven't endorsed this resolution. Uh, we worked closely at, with the uh, University of Michigan for the climate strike um, and the student groups there um, to demand that the university go uh, net zero in carbon emissions. Um, these pictures right here is Sunrise along with Rep. Rashida Tlaib, 
we were protesting outside of the Detroit Auto Show. Um, and the reason we were doing that is because they were holding what we called an auto prom, a very fancy party for a lot of very rich people, while they just the week before had announced the closing of the Pole Town plant. And we thought that was really ironic. So we wanted to call them out for that. And we wanted to make, we want to make Detroit kind of this engine of the Green New Deal. We have a lot of unused industrial capacity that could be used to make green technologies, including that Pole Town plant in Hamtramck. Um, and so we, we want to make sure GM is held accountable and we call them out for when they tell us we're gonna, they're going to provide jobs and then two years later they close the plant down. Oh, well that one picture didn't show up. But uh, anyway, there's a Road to the Green Deal tour coming up on uh, April 19th. We'll be having a town hall at the Bond Steel Theater in Detroit. Abdul Al Sayed will be speaking, Rep Rashida Tlaib will be speaking, and we'll be having a big forum discussion about the Green New Deal, as well as people from Sunrise Movement National and other local leaders, um, union members from Good Jobs Now, and the Democratic Socialists of America. Uh, I was going to turn it to Yusuf, and then we'll open up the floor for questions. <clears throat> Round of applause for Hudson. Thanks for all your good work. Uh, this is awesome to see so much energy around this issue of the Green New Deal. Uh, and I'm glad to see, so just a little bit of background. You, many of you in the room know this because you've been active in the Democratic Party for a little while now, but one of the main sticking points uh, that, that we have, uh, that we've seen, is this issue of uh, particularly folks that are in carbon dependent economies feeling like the environmental movement is not taking their concerns into account. So if we move away from coal, coal miners lose their jobs. If we move away from cars, uh, then people in the automotive industry will lose their jobs. And I think the fact that this uh, Green New Deal discussion is focused around making sure that uh, jobs and the people's livelihoods are at the center of this conversation uh, it, it is important and it sort of bridges that gap and it's something that uh, that you know uh, we've been trying to work uh, people in the labor community have been trying to work on people in the environmental community have been trying to work on to find where we can uh, we can find that common ground so I think this is a really exciting initiative and something that um, has a lot of promise and so what I was just going to talk briefly about today is some of the uh, conversations that are happening in Lansing uh, because uh, as Hudson said obviously this is a federal level conversation uh, that, that started um, but now it's sort of trickled into uh, uh, more of a, of a, of a state-level uh, discussion as well, uh, which is really exciting. So we're looking at uh, the potential of putting together uh, sort of a Green New Deal for Michigan uh, at the state level. And some of the components of that are going to be similar, and some of the components of that are going to be different. We don't have all the details yet. We're still, you know, working on that. Um, but one, one of the core uh, tenants that we are going to be uh, hopefully including in that final uh, plan is a bill that I introduced last session, which would, uh, we have a renewable energy mandate in the state of Michigan that forces our utilities to provide a certain amount of renewable energy. Uh, and, and so my bill would uh, ensure that we have 100% renewable energy by the year 2050. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that, uh, that, that we want to build into uh, this Green New Deal. On the job side, the, some of the issue that the, the federal government uh, is very well positioned to do some of these jobs programs. Uh, because they have more resources in terms of raising revenue uh, and having the resources to hire uh, folks to have that uh, federal government jobs guarantee. The state government, uh, we can't do deficit spending. We can't uh, you know, raise, raise taxes the same way that the federal government can do. So our, uh, our ability to do some of that is a little bit restricted. Uh, but we are looking at some uh, other ways that the state government itself um, can make sure that we're encouraging employers uh, and having positions within the state government itself to, to do some of these functions. Um, so one of the things that I'm really excited about is with the growing uh, solar economy in the state of Michigan, I met with some folks in the solar industry uh, recently, uh, and these, these are business people. These are people that are making, uh, making money. Uh, they're in operating their company in seven states right now, and they are saying uh, to me, that uh, Michigan is their hottest market, um, no pun intended. Uh, but they are installing solar panels here uh, like crazy. Apparently, they told me they did $100 million uh, in sales. They've only been in Michigan for 18 months. Uh, they have been installing solar panels all across the state. They told me that uh, they believe Michigan is unique, not just because 
uh, of the fact that uh, we, have, we do have uh, good opportunities for solar, uh, but also that people in Michigan want energy independence. And this is something that they haven't necessarily seen in all the other states, the other seven states that they're operating in. People in Michigan want to be able to put a solar panel on their roof and be independent from those big utility companies and the whims of, of their executives and, uh, and, and their energy bills. So people in Michigan are unique, uh, and they want to make sure that, uh, that, that that's a growing industry continuing forward. But what we want to make sure in that process, and what I brought up with them, is as we hire more electrical talent, we have great talent in our IBW, in our, in our uh, local uh, labor market, in our union uh, here in Washtenaw County and across the state, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. We want to make sure that we're including them in that process so that we have folks uh, who are, you know, getting jobs in this new economy and making sure that they're part of that progress uh, and, and, and changing that conversation. So this is all part of, uh, of, of this Green New Deal process. It's making sure that we're, uh, that we're building that economy of the future and that we're not just saying, uh, let's go carbon neutral. Let's go carbon neutral and make sure that everybody who has the potential of losing their job is taken care of and has a job in that new uh, green economy. And that piece of it, I think, is just what I wanted to emphasize today, the importance of that. And we see so many instances where, uh, where we, have, we, have, we struggle with that tension. Um, around line five, we struggle with that tension. Around uh, pipeline projects across uh, across the uh, the state, we struggle with that tension. So, how are we going to make sure that we that we build those uh, job opportunities? And I love this uh, meeting with the solar company because it was like concrete right here. Here, here are jobs that because they told me they're like we're high, we need to hire hundreds of people. We don't have enough uh, talent to be able to install all these panels. Um, and so that's where I was like, well, here's some you know, make sure that you. We have a great infrastructure with our labor, labor unions to be able to help provide some of that talent, train folks. Our unions, uh, especially the trades unions, uh, have robust training programs that uh, are at no cost to taxpayers uh, and usually are at no cost to the individuals going through the program. So you can go through this program uh, and get uh, certifications in whatever uh, 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 trade union you're in. Uh, and then you're sort of in this uh, in this market, and you can you know get these jobs. And we just want to make sure that employers are linking up with these labor unions that are training these uh, young professionals to get those jobs. Uh, and there's huge opportunity for that. And things like the Green New Deal and things like what we're having these conversations at the state level can help to do that, and can help to make sure that our economy of the future works for everybody. So. Uh, we, I think, are going to take questions now about uh, the federal and state conversations that are happening. I have to get out of here probably just before 11 to be able to make it downtown, um, but uh, we'll open it up now.